Hello everyone, this is Robert, and a while back I picked up one of these cute little Harbor Freight mini cutoff saws, but it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. So I decided to make just a few modifications, and I came up with this. This is the mini monster, and it's absolutely terrifying, and you're going to want one. Just wait till you see what it can do. If you've never seen one of these little cutoff saws before, you can find this at Harbor Freight for about 40 bucks. I was walking through the aisles and saw this one day and thought it'd be pretty cool to try out. You can also find these on Amazon as well. And they use this little two inch kind of saw blade looking thing. They call it like a multi-purpose disc, but it's mainly used to cut off like wooden dowels or small wooden trim. You know, like if you're building a dollhouse or something like that. However, as soon as you start getting into any kind of metal work, if you do even soft aluminum or copper, the thing just kind of bogs down. It doesn't really cut all that well. It already has this cool vise, and you can even do miters on it. And generally, it is a nice little tool, but there's three main problems with it, and that's what we're going to fix. So the first issue I have with this is the actual cutting blade itself. These are pretty nice, they're relatively cheap, and they do a decent job at wood, but as soon as you go to anything else, then you start to have issues. So what I did is I picked up a pack of these abrasive cutoff discs. These are relatively cheap, they're two inch, they're a direct drop-in fit, um, you don't need any adapters, and these are fantastic. This helps quite a bit. Obviously aluminum gums up a little bit, but you can start cutting steel and some other things like that once we get the power that we need more on that later. I also tried some of these kind of diamond abrasive discs and surprisingly these didn't work nearly as well. They're a lot more expensive so for metal cutting I definitely recommend these little guys. The second thing I want to fix on this is the maximum RPMs. The stock blade can go up to about 13,000. The stock unit claims to be about 10,000 but testing it free spinning it's closer to 13,000 However, it bogs down substantially as soon as you put a load on it, and that's just not high enough if you want to do some actual real cutting. For example, the cutoff discs have a maximum RPM range of about 30,000, and since I'm not making dollhouses, we're going to get closer to that range. And lastly, power. Underneath the hood, this baby's got an AC brushed induction motor capable of pumping out 60 to 80 watts, which really is not that much. This is a relatively small AC induction motor, and the thing about an AC induction motor, especially brushed, is they're very inefficient, but they're also very cheap to make. So we need to do something about that, and also since we're going to be going to higher RPMs, we need a lot more power to push through material. So let's get all of this fixed. So really all we need to do is rip out the original motor and replace it with one that spins faster and is more powerful, and then use these abrasive cutoff discs. And that's exactly what I've done with the Mini Monster. It now spins at 25,000 RPM, which is right in the range of those cutoff discs, and it's a tad bit more powerful. The stock motor was about 60 to 80 watts, and we're now up to around 700 watts, or just under one horsepower, assuming you can provide it with enough load. Let's take a look inside. And here's what the guts of the monster look like. For the motor, I'm using a brushless DC motor with a one-to-one -one gear drive. This is actually the same pulley system that was in here. I just had to find a different pulley that fit this motor. The motor is a prop drive 3542 with a 1250 kV rating. The kV rating will tell you how fast that motor will spin given the voltage input. Since I'm using a 20 volt input from a tool battery, 20 volts times 1250, 25,000 on a one-to-one -one ratio. So this will spin at 25,000 RPM. For the electronics, I'm using a 60 amp ESC. Um, this is custom tuned. This is one of my old weapon motor ESCs from a Beetleweight. 
and I've got that controlled by an Arduino somewhere tucked in there. I think that might be it. And there is also a BEC, which provides the voltage for the Arduino. Now I'm using the Arduino because I don't want to run all the power through the power switch because that would be a point of failure. So this is just simply sending a signal into the Arduino to tell it to ramp up the motor. It sends a signal to the ESC and that's what tells the motor to go spin spin. It also has a slow ramp up and a slow ramp down because there's not a lot of weight or resistance on this little cutoff wheel. So without that ramp up and wrap down, this thing would be extremely, extremely violent. And then there's just an LED over here, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's get this thing put back together. So I've got this all reassembled, Loctite, zip-tied, and here's a closer look at the little um, nameplate badge. My wife came up with this design, and this is actually black PLA that's been engraved with a fiber laser, so it kind of leaves this white color behind, and then the LED sits right there in the head. Pretty cool. In terms of powering this, it's actually DC now, so there's just kind of a pigtail lead that comes off the back. This is all 12 gauge wiring, and this is an XT90. So you can use it with one of these simple little adapters. This is for my Bosch batteries. This works with Bosch and uh, Milwaukee, I believe, and it just has the mating XT90. So you can use it that way. Or if you want, you can use it with, you know, your big hobby batteries. This thing will draw quite a bit of current, so you need a big battery to support that. So if you're a combat robot builder, you can build one of these and then just use your existing batteries to power it. So let's turn this thing on. Before we do some test cuts, I wanted to give you an idea of the relative sound difference between these two. So for the Mini Monster, all we need to do is plug it into its power source. And it will boot up and turn on. The LED on the top is lit to show us that it's on. And then this switch will actually control the motor, whereas this one, we just flip this switch and turn on. So the original. Yeah, 60 watts of power. The Mini Monster. If that doesn't make you happy, I don't know what does. Let's do some cuts. So I'm gonna start off with something easy, just kind of as a baseline. This is 10 millimeter dowel rod. I think it's um, probably poplar pine, something like that. It's really not a hardwood, it might be oak. But this is the original, so let's see how it does. Not bad, decent cut. As you can see, it kind of bogs down a little bit. Now let's switch over to the Mini Monster. So here's the Mini Monster with the saw blade and the same dowel rod. Obviously, not really much of a challenge. Let's move on to something a little bit more difficult. Unfortunately, neither of these are well suited for cutting aluminum. Although they do make some scores in the surface, um, they really don't cut all the way through. The original just doesn't have the power to cut all the way through, and the Mini Monster, although it has the power, it's way too fast, and these saw blades just aren't well suited for actually cutting aluminum. They just kind of gum up, and then it stops making any progress. Thankfully, though, aluminum's pretty easy to cut with other methods, just a hacksaw or a bandsaw. I'm not too concerned about that, but if I do find the appropriate blade, I'll let you know. So let's move on to something a little bit more difficult, which is steel and hardened steel. Here's what the original chop saw looks like cutting a 5mm rod of mild steel with one of those 2 inch abrasive discs. It eventually works. It takes a while to kind of get the rhythm down. Um, initially it just kind of bogs down, but then after a while it kind of does bite in a little bit and you can kind of get the feel for the rhythm. And it takes maybe about a minute to cut through this 5mm rod. And now, the Mini Monster. Much better. There's really not a good way to cut down something like this linear rod or even this motor shaft. But the Mini Monster can do this, all of this, and heck, 
even a hard down key. So let's just cut all this and I'll show you what it can do. So that is my custom mini monster. I really love this thing for anything in the shop that I really don't have a good way to cut. Screws, Allen keys for whatever reason, uh, bolts, linear rods, this thing is fantastic. Basically anything that you can cut with one of these cut off discs, this thing can just cut through like butter. It does, however, leave a horrible mess behind. So I'm going to have to figure out some sort of dust collection thing. And also, I don't know if you noticed in the video, but the sparks just kind of go right down into the case. And that's what was smoking that little hole that's forming right there. So I'm going to have to figure out something, maybe just some um, adhesive metal tape or something like that. But overall, yeah, it is fantastic. If you're looking to build one of these yourself, just throw in a brushless motor that is as big and powerful as you can handle that spins at the correct RPM. You want to be under that RPM range um, of these discs, which is a maximum of 30,000. And the battery. Do not forget about the battery. Um, initially, I was using just kind of one of these, and it just cannot provide enough power. You need something big. You really need something that can push a lot of current to this thing, and this big 8 amp hour can do it. And just in that cutting, we knocked down one of the bars on this. It was like two minutes worth of cutting and it's already down one bar. You can drain a battery pretty quick with this little thing. So as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video and go make one of these for yourself.